So there is another nitpicky requirement for this, and that's because you can't show an animation in a print portfolio, and yet the requirements of digital imaging are that you understand you know, print modalities of communication as well. So we want to have the option to print every assignment we do, even an animated one. So we're going to take our GIF animation and we're going to output it as nine still frames. So how do we do this? We go back to our stage file in PhotoP. So that stage file that gave us our GIF that we outputted our animation test frames from, basically we're going to pick our nine best frames. But instead of doing it from our test files, we're going to do it from the Photoshop file because they're all nicely stacked together. So we go to the stage. It's easy to screw this up. This is not creative. This is just layout. This is just communicating clearly. So I drag the stage file to PhotoP. I open it up and I see all of my layers including a background layer, which I don't need. I'm going to make sure that my image size is 800 by 800 pixels. And then I'm going to make sure my guides are stuck to the sides of my 800 by 800 pixels. So here they are. Next, I now have this flipbook of frames, right? And because of stuff I was doing in Photoshop to, to clean this up, some of them are at zero opacity, which is really annoying. So I need to set them all up to be 100 opacity. But basically, this is a flipbook of all my animation pages, and they're all at 100%. Good golly. Here we go, here we go. But we only need nine of these frames. So what's helpful is to look at your rough storyboard and choose which frame is best for your middle frame. The one that's in the center of the story. That's usually in a beginning, middle, end transformation story structure, the middle frame would be where you see the transformation start to happen. Or in the midst of happening. Well, this is how carpal tunnel happens. Almost there. Opacity matters on layers. But the real star is that we got an animation we liked. Okay, next. What is my middle frame in my rough storyboard? It's where the book starts to catch fire, right? So even though I added a match that wasn't in my original rough storyboard, that is inconsequential to the transformation. So I got to find that frame. Ooh, I had a lot at the end where this smoke cleared, but that, those were easy to make. So I got to get to where the fire starts, right? Which I think is here. I think that's a good middle frame. So once I've de determined my middle frame, it's my 17th frame in my animation, I'm going to mark it a color by right-clicking around the eyeball, and I'm going to mark it yellow. So that's my middle frame. I've got a flip book. Think of it like a deck of cards. And you can actually do this with film. You can have companies print out film stills, 24 frames per second, as a deck of cards for you. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do that. But some, uh, some cinema majors use them as their business cards. And what we're going to do is we're going to deal out those cards into nice little rows, just like we're a dealer at Vegas, right? So we have to set the table. We've got these cards in the middle of the table. We've got to grow the table around it. And this is layout, and layout is not a strength 
of Photoshop or of PhotoP, but one thing it can do very well is grow directly from the middle. It will always perfectly center things if you grow out from the middle. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to Image, Canvas Size, and we're going to change it from pixels to inches, and we're going to make its width 30 inches and its height 40 inches. And we're going to have it grow from the middle. There it is. So now we have a table to deal these cards onto. The problem is this table came with a really ugly material that has this kind of gray checkerboard that's hard to look at. So we're going to set the table by going to the bottom of our layers, no matter how many layers you have, and filling your background or creating a new layer and saying edit fill with white. So I'm going to set a nice white tablecloth at 100% opacity on this table. Now I've got my guides, I've got my stack of flipbook pages, but I need to have even gutters and borders around each one. So I do that with a new tool called the grid. You'll find the grid under view options, under show grid, and you'll see the shortcut for it. You can toggle it on and off with command apostrophe. Now, unfortunately, pix, uh, uh, photo P is showing us pixels rather than inches. So it's a little annoying. So we're going to do five of these pixel grids as our even border from each side. So I have to count up. Bring a guide down with my move tool. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to do it from each side. One, two, three, four, five. And I have to do it from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. I have to do it from the other side. This is the equivalent of about three quarters of an inch. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I can hit Command apostrophe, get rid of that ugly grid, and you'll see I have these beautiful sections where I'm going to put my other cards. And it's pretty easy to start at the beginning with your first page of your flipbook. So I'm going to select layer one. I'm going to make sure auto select is unchecked with the move tool. And that way, if I select layer one, I'll deal from the bottom of my deck and I'll deal it up to the corner. And then my next one, I'm guessing, let's do frame seven or layer seven. The book starts to drop. If I don't like that one, I can go to the one after it. But I do kind of like that one. I'll turn this one off. Then I can go to, let's see, Layer 8. Yes, it comes down. And it starts to glow. And then I can go to maybe layer 11. Ooh, and then right in the middle, it really glows. Now, do I want that or do I want it to be a little bit faster? I think I want it to be a little bit faster. So instead of, let's see, this one, I want this one right and maybe instead of this one I want this one oh, I didn't expect that yeah okay and then maybe instead of this one <laughs> so that's my middle I can kind of go through what do I want? Maybe I want that one. So I'm going to make that my middle. Does that kind of make sense? Now, I've kind of changed it a little bit from my rough storyboard, but this is telling the story that I wanted, right? Kind of slowing it down where the book lowers on the head and changes the expression to really happy. And then bad things start to happen. So this will be my next frame. And then bad things really start to happen. This will be my next frame. And then maybe this one. 
and then maybe this one. All right. So now I'm looking at these nine frames. I can turn off my guides with command semicolon, and I'm asking myself, does this tell a story? Does this show a narrative? Does this show a transformation? Is there a beginning, middle, and an end? And I've got two different transformations here, right? I've got the transformation of the book starting to glow. That's a transformation. And then I've got the transformation of the, the fire engulfing the environment. So if I'm happy with that, I now I'm going to save this not as my stage file, otherwise I lose all of my animation. I still I instead save it as a PSD and change the name using Chrome. That's the problem with using Safari for PhotoP is it won't let you name the file when you save as a PSD. And I'm going to call this Assignment 3 Refined Storyboard. And that is the third PSD file you have for this project. So one is an assets file, one is a stage file, and then a refined storyboard file. And then to put it to Canvas, I need to export it as a JPEG. And this JPEG will have a different name because I renamed it. And you'll find that in Downloads. And I'm going to put all those files to my folder for the assignment. So I mark the online file types, which are the GIF. This was my final GIF that I liked. I mark them orange. And my storyboard sketch. So I have two JPEGs and one GIF. All those need to go to Canvas. And then all my PSD files, including my refined storyboard, my assets, and my stage, I mark green. And then anything else is just an extra. All right. So now I'm going to go to Canvas, put them all up, and then we are done with this assignment. So just to review, your GIF file, not a PSD, you can test it in a browser beforehand, but that is the animated file that you're putting into Canvas. And it will play automatically, and it will loop forever unless you set it to, to only play a certain number of times. So I recommend looping it forever. Then your refined storyboard as a JPEG. Remember, you can't put PSD files online. Then I'm going to shrink that down. And then when we do a presentation critique at the beginning of next class, what I'm going to ask is, what do you think showcases your transformation better? Your animation or your storyboard? Because it really depends on how subtle your transformation is and how much it's based on time-based media to change. In this case, I think they both showcase it, but I think it's, it's more dramatically shown in the animation. Especially the flames, because I have a lot more time to develop them and then to make the smoke recede. Okay. Notice, even though I set my animation set to reset, my last frame is not the same as my first frame, because that doesn't help the story. That would be a waste of a frame. 